Hi guys, welcome to this video. Uh, today's video is just a quick tip showing you how to set the depth of field on a camera in Blender um, and also how to animate it and set, uh, do what they call like focus racking. Okay, so let's just get into it. Um, so the first thing you can do uh, to set the focus is if, if you select the camera and then go down to the camera tab here, you can see two things. You can see focus on object and also focus distance. If you've got an object selected, uh, you'll see the focus distance grays out and you, you can change it, but it doesn't do anything, it doesn't change the focus. Um, and the way you can see this focus distance and visualize it is if you come into viewport display, make sure limits is checked. And you see what that does is it brings up this uh, cross here and you can, you can click and drag and control. Um, and you can see here that focus distance is actually changing as we click and drag that. Um, and, you can see, and then you see over here that as we drag it further away, uh, the building comes out of focus. And I mean, that's great and everything, but it's kind of, it's in this linear line from the camera pointing forward. And if this is the frame that I want, but I want the bust, I want to make sure that the bus is in focus. If I was using limits, I'd have to come down here and just like make sure that it was lined up. Uh, just in the perfect area to get the bus in focus. Um, so I don't use the focus distance. What I like to do is focus di either directly on the object. So you can click focus object, click the little pipette, select the bus. That bus is always gonna be in focus now. So if I move this bus kind of like here, it's in focus. If I move it over here, it's in focus. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the way you would do it, especially in a still scene where you've got one thing in focus. Um, if you select your camera and then just check depth of field and then check that um, and check the object in the box there. But if you want to animate it and do the focus racking where one thing is in focus and then suddenly that goes out of focus and something else comes into focus, uh, the easiest way to do it and the best way I do it um, is with an empty. So if you press shift, right click somewhere in a scene, press shift A, add an empty. Um, I like to use the axes, axes, plain axis, axes, whatever. Uh, I like to use an empty axis for this. You can use any of the empties, doesn't really matter. Um, but what you can do is we can put this axis directly on the bus. And then if we select our camera and then from this focus and then go to focus on object and then click the empty that empty is now our focus point so I'm just gonna make this really extreme I'm gonna select our camera change the f-stops which we'll come on to in a second um, so now you can see that the empty this empty here is in focus if we move this empty you can see that our focus is changing. So if I wanted it over here, now the building's in focus, or like the window, or um, could have these barrels in focus. And place it there. Um, so you see how powerful that is, that you can control it, you can move it, you can make sure specifically where you want it. Um, the reason that we're using an empty and not the object is so we can animate it though, so we can do the focus racking. So if we wanted um, kind of nothing to be in focus, we could bring the empty kind of just over here, have the whole scene out of focus. We could press I, set the location of the empty as a keyframe. Then if we go forward a certain amount of frames, and then if we move the empty over to the bus, so you can see the bus is now in focus here. And then press I and set the location. You can see now, as the as it plays out, the empty moves, but the camera is always locked, it, locking its depth of field to the empty. So as we play back this, it's just like a nice sort of transition and it becomes in focus. So that's how to animate the focus and choose the focus and do the, this is what they call rack focusing. You've got something in focus and then the focus changes to a new object. So you can see that that's what's happening there. Um, 
usually use it for if there's something in the background in focus and then something in the foreground in focus that's usually kind of so that's how to control the actual like where of the camera's focusing and now to control the actual depth of field if we select our camera again uh, and f stop is what we need um, and that controls the focus it's just like a normal actual camera um, so obviously this is really extreme 0 0.1 that's the lowest it can go and you can see that um, on our scene here it's kind of everything's out of focus apart from that very specific point that we've chosen which it can work quite well for a scene like this but it kind of blows out it's not very realistic it's it's stylistic so you can go for it if you want um, but what you want to do is you want to dial in the f-stop kind of to make it right for your scene if you hold shift while you drag this you can see that we're controlling how much is in focus so now the main point of focus is the bus, but then we want the sort of factory in focus, and then kind of the background and the grass is out of focus, which is great. That's kind of, that is a nice kind of look, and that's probably where I'd choose to have it. And um, this number will vary depending on your focal length on your camera and how big your scene is, like what's in focus and what's not. Um, for this, this is kind of like a very small scene, like this bus is only, um, 20 centimeters tall so it's it's supposed to be like a small model kind of setup so I've, I've done the camera accordingly um, but yeah that's how you choose the depth of field for your camera um, now blades is something different that controls kind of the look of the out of focusness if you will um, it's probably best showing you that in a new scene okay so the reason I've set this scene is to show you what blades does um, blades is kind of the best way to show it is to if we quickly get up a picture of camera lens. Inside a camera, a camera's got these blades that kind of make like a hexagon sort of shape in them. Um, and you can kind of see in this image like what uh, kind of what effect we're gonna get. If we've got four blades, it's gonna be a square let in lighting. Um, if it's five blades, you're going to get like a pentagon kind of pent pentagon. Yeah, go with that one. Um, so currently, if it's on zero, that's like infinite. You get perfectly round sort of spheres. So the minimum amount of blades you can have is three. So even if you type in one blade, it goes to three. Um, but you can see that the lights in the background have a sort of triangular shape. Um, if we use the f-stop to sort of dial it in further, you can kind of see that even more, that becomes more apparent. Um, so you can see from our image exactly what's gonna happen. If we have five blades, we're gonna get uh, the pentagram, pentagon, five blades, four blades, six blades. And then, I mean, eventually after a point, and you'll find that point quite quickly. So like, if we just scrub through this from like 13 onward you can keep on going to 16 nothing really changes so um, it completely it will depend on your depth of field settings and kind of each kind of camera so yeah you can see there like after a certain point it becomes unnoticeable uh, but you can get a really cool sort of stylistic look to this um, you can get yeah you can get a really cool like stylistic look to that uh, rotation is just the orientation of those blades so if you wanted um, triangle you can have that uh, again I mean this these are all animated so if you were setting your focus and you wanted to kind of for some reason the bokeh to animate you can do that so you see the lights kind of in the background they change and then finally ratio um, kind of I don't know exactly what it's doing but you can see here kind of almost um, sort of squishes the blades together a bit closer from the looks of it. Uh, but you can see kind of here what the kind of power you've got with this camera is. You can get some really stylistic looks. Um, so you can have these like nice twinkly kind of lights in the background that looks a bit more sort of realistic. Um, if we swap over to cycles as well, just to get that nice kind of glow on the ground. Um, but yeah, that's what depth of field does. That's kind of depth of field in a nutshell. If you want me to do any more videos about 
depth of field or any other features that you're unsure of, uh, please do let me know. Um, please subscribe if you want. Um, if you like this video, it'd be great if you could subscribe. I'll have more of these like quick tip videos coming out soon. Um, if you liked it, do hit that like button. It just means that obviously these videos are kind of good videos and you want to see more of these quick tips. If you want to support the channel, make sure you check me out on Patreon below. Uh, you get access to all the like, tutorial project files. Um, I can't include the other little scene because uh, that's for a client project, but I can include kind of this one. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'll just quickly mock up like another toy sort of scene um, in a similar style. But yeah, the Patreon's there to hopefully eventually help support the channel and make it so I can actually make more videos more often. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.